Hi you guys, welcome to my shop. My name is Jaap Dekker. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the reactions I got. Um, it took a while before I had this third part ready because of medical issues, but I won't uh, uh, bother you with the details. Uh, in this episode, we will measure the parallelism and linearity of the headstock of the Holtzmann 400. The deviations we found uh, may not be extreme and most of the people will never run into problems with the machine, but uh, I need a very precise machine, so I had to check it. Uh, a margin of run out and, you know, not being linear of one hundredth of a millimeter for me is acceptable, but uh, it was a bit more. Um, I found out that this machine had some issues, uh, but it doesn't mean it is a bad machine. Uh, for the money it is okay, it's what you get for this price. And uh, This machine is known under other names like Optimum, Quantum, uh, Holtzmann, uh, whatever. Uh, they have another name, they have another color, they may have some other details, but it is Chinese made and uh, it's not very well checked. Uh, so you may run into some issues. If you buy a German or a Swiss machine, uh, well, it's always good, but it costs you five times more. I, I had to uh, do it on a budget, I don't have the money for those expensive machines, so it's a hobby. Uh, so I'm uh, okay with it. And uh, at the other hand, fixing the problems uh, makes you bond with your machines and uh, makes uh, you know your machine thoroughly. And um, it's not a big deal, you know. So, let's go. First of all, we make some measures on the outside the OD uh, of the 3 and the 4 jaw chuck. A 4 jaw chuck can always be set running through but a 3 jaw chuck not. So I have to check that first. And uh, if you have a rod that is running through then you can see if there is an aberration. And if we know the aberration, we can correct the headstock. The OD of both chucks is good, uh, also the front, but the re inner runout of the three jaw chuck is not good enough. You can see here the checking of the rod. This is a very precise ground rod. It appears to be okay, round and parallel and so on. It's good quality. The four jaw chuck is set to run true. Now I'm finding the highest point of the rod. And of course, I will uh, go and see if there is an aberration from left to right. And there was two or three hundredth of a millimeter that it drops. So there is a bit, say the rod is, is pointing down a bit. I repeated the measurement to be sure with a running rod so it will compensate for little. A run out of one hundredth of a millimeter for me is acceptable. But two hundred and three hundredth of a millimeter is a bit too much. So one hundredth is my uh, criterion. So I took off this. I took off two screws. One and that one. Uh, it still does not move, so I, I took off this. This is not fixed any longer. This is not fixed. This is, uh, but it's still fixed to 
this part. I have to unscrew it from the back side. And because it leans forward, I have to put some uh, shims on this. So I had to take the case off. Um, it was a bit awkward, so I could not do it um, on camera. I had to do it with four, uh, <laughs> with two hands. Uh, there are four screws that need to be uh, loosened. These three actually don't need to be unscrewed because there is a hole in here. But those four have to come loose. Then you can take this backward. And then you can access the two bolts. These screws are not easy to get open. And I'll show you why. Because if you put this in, this, this part is too long. This sort of a hex. Here you can put it in under a... See, the, it, is, it is possible, but with that uh, round end, you actually can reach it. So that's what I did. They are the two at the back side. At this moment, the headstock is uh, loose, as you can see. Um, I leave the rod on because it is uh, square and true running it is indicated so I leave it on but when you look at the underside there was rust and I have to clean it first and see what's going on and see it I have to, I just have to check it to fill it with a with a shim or maybe I have to scrape it. I, I don't know yet. This this part, so the, the whole assembly, the whole uh, headstock is tilting a bit towards... At this point, it is two, three hundredth of a millimeter. That's a bit too much. I think at this point, if we have, we add one hundredth of a shim, it should be okay, but I have to check it out. The headstock is fixed with four screws. They are a bit awkward and you need something like this. At the front it is doable, but at the rear um, you cannot... <laughs> Let me show you. You cannot get there. It's... This is just too high. And as you can see, um, I took off the, the red, let's call it red chip catcher. So I had to take it off. Now I can access the backside and I could access the, uh, this, where, where all the electronics is. This is the pulse width uh, regulator for the motor. This of course is the motor. And this is the safety switch and there is also a safety switch. I took this off, pulleys, pulley holder, it's all, all got to come off. This doable, it is a lot of work but it's not very complicated. Yeah, now, now the headstock is, uh, is loose. Gonna check the underside, of course. I, I could not do it uh, filming, but I, it's sundown, it's loose, and I will check the underside and correct it. And then, of course, we will have a straight and parallel headstock.
So, the machine is straight. The headstock is uh, dealt with. Um, it is parallel and uh, linear. What did I do? I used an oil stone to uh, clean the, the bed and the underside of the headstock because there was debris and burrs. That already gave some improvement. Uh, at the other hand I had to shim it and I used simple household aluminium file. Foil. Aluminium foil. Um, nothing special to it. I used a single uh, layer and this is about 20 microns thick. And that appeared to be enough. I put it at this side, uh, at the both sides of the bed and it made the headstock tilt a little bit so that here is no more uh, deviation. It is straight and it is linear now. Um, this is good. Uh, it was a bit of a hassle because at the front you can reach the uh, bolts really easy but at the other side you had to take off the electronics uh, box and um, if you uh, try to reach the bolts it is a bit of a, a bit of a hassle to get there but you know it it, it worked out and I got it straight um, the next thing to do I, I, I have to grind the inside taper of the headstock. The Morse taper 3 uh, has a bit too much run out and I will grind it. Also, um, I will grind the 3 jaw chuck. It has a bit too much run out also. So, uh, the grinding will be done in the next episode. Well, if you like it, give me a thumbs up and maybe you consider taking a subscription. Okay, you guys, thank you for watching. Hopeful we see you in the next episode. Bye.